Hi, Paul from Contemporary Synth here. In these tutorials, we look at the artistic and technical capabilities of the Roland Phantom O workstation. Today, I'm going to work on an a cappella song, or kind of a cappella, using some cool choir voices that are on this keyboard. The song I've chosen to demonstrate those voices is Just a Closer Walk with Thee, which is a traditional Christian song. I'm going to do it in a Dixieland upbeat style, although it's often done in kind of a slower New Orleans style, but I'm going to be upbeat today. Uh, a couple things that are different today is I'm going to do this video in two parts because I've gotten the feedback they're too long. So this one is just going to go half and then I'll give you a link to listen to the other one. And the second thing is I performed the keyboard upgrade this week. So there are a couple things that are going to look different and I'll, I'll share some of those as we go along. The upgrade is, it's not hard, but it's not e super easy to understand when you look at the website. You end up using a thumb drive, you format on the keyboard, download it, unzip move the files under the thumb drive, then you gotta put it in the memory slot, push the button, then put it in the external device slot and push the button. I mean, it's not hard to do, but it's a little unusual. Uh, and it only takes about 10 minutes once you understand it all, but it, it took me longer than that to figure it out. But I mean, less than half an hour uh, if you got some time to think about it. But there are a few things that change. The fundamental purpose of the upgrade is to enable greater functionality with Ableton Live, but there are a couple other little things that helps along the way. All right, let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna point out is one of the things associated with the upgrade is you get a new parameter button here on the single zone view. Uh, it takes you to the oscillator parameters, uh, very similar to the parameter button that's over here that takes you to the filter, um, or the uh, effects button over here that takes you there. Uh, okay, I mean, they had some real estate, so they might as well use it. Another thing that's interesting, if you do go to the effects, here it says sensitivity and mix. Uh, you have a sensitivity and mix XY pad over here where you can adjust those also. I don't know, maybe that helps you out, maybe it doesn't. I'm gonna reset this. So I'm looking at an initial scene and I'm gonna get started right away with my pattern. Uh, even though this is acapella, I'm gonna have some rhythm, but it's kind of hand rhythm. I'm gonna have a shaker, a snap and a clap. And I'm gonna use the analog drum kit because I've been liking that one recently and I'm going to go ahead and load all three channels with that now so I don't have to mess with it as I go along. On page five of the drum section. All right, I, the first one's going to be tricky. The second two are easy. I want to have a shaker sound that goes chicka chicka chick. In fact, I have my shaker here. It's going to be... So how do you get that swing sound when you have straight eights. And that leads me to recording, which is another interesting thing associated with the upgrade. If I click on time signature, I can now enter in the number of beats and the note value that I want. And uh, there've been a couple of comments about that in the, uh, in the comment section. I think a lot of people are gonna be happy they can create that custom time signature. Uh, for, day, for now, I'm just do, using a straight 4-4. Four four. Uh, my tempo is gonna be 80 because as I said, I'm going upbeat. You'll also notice as a result of the upgrade, there are a few more note scale sections, uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, to get that shaker sound I want, I'm going to use triplets. Sometimes you'll see in sheet music notation, eighth, eighth, an equal sign, and then a triplet hat with only the first and third triplet. That's the swing pattern that I'm gonna go after. And I'll show you what that means. Uh, actually here, this is one twelfth triplet, which means one third of a quarter note, three times four is 12. So if you have a click going, that would be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So if you only had the first and third triplet, it would be, sometimes that's called the donkey beat. And that's too slow for what I want. But here's one twenty-fourth, and this is one third of an eighth note, and see if I can get it right. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. And if you have the first and third of that triplet, it's, and that's what I want. So I'm in my pattern recorder and I can see it goes out to 12. So I'm gonna do these triplets. My shaker notes are this B flat. So I'm gonna use the B natural for my hard hit and then the soft hit for the B flat. So these are my triplets. I only want the first and the third. First, third, first, third first, third, and I need to do the second measure as well, or the second half of the measure. First, third, first, third, excuse myself. First, third, first, third, first, third, first, third. See what we got. 
All right, that's what I wanted there. For, we can keep it going because it's kind of cool. This one is gonna be really easy. This is my snap. And it's on two and four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And the third pattern is the same thing with a clap. And I can have some fun with uh, panning them a bit. Uh, so what I'm going to do when I start the song is I'll start with the snap for the first verse and then I'll bring in the clap and that's a cool way to build. All right, that's it for the rhythm for this one. The next thing is this choir voice that I want to use. And it's over here in the scat section. Scat is a jazz style where you use nonsense words to fill in the, a verse or an instrumental. Very popular in the 40s and 50s. You, you'd recognize it. You know, they hear do 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 wop wop wop. That's all scat. There's some cool sounds in here. Got some do's, got some bops, got some dows, and combinations of all that. Well, this AX jazz scat is fun because it has. A little everything. In fact, let's go to the zone view and hit that cool new parameter button. Of course, I could hit it over there, right? If we look at the keyboard, we'll see that there are four partials. They all four cover the whole keyboard, but they're separated by velocities. 85, 110, 125, and 127. And if I look at what the sound setting is, oops, sorry, partial one is do's. Partial two is dat. Partial three is bop. Hit a little harder. And partial four is a Dow. So when you're playing, da, 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 do, 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 do. you can get different sounds as you play. And that's really fun. That's what gave me the idea to do this. And I'm going to load this pattern into that zone into both. Now, AX, Jazz Scat, you know, I try to explain the digraphs when I see them, and I can. AX is Roland's signature for the guitar, of all things. It started with the word axis, A-X-I-S which makes sense because the guitar is an unusual instrument with a piano down here and a neck up here. So you have keys down here and a modulation and a pitch bend and the, the LFO effects, all that kind of stuff to adjust the tone up here. Uh, so it's turned into the, the most recent one is AX Edge. Chick Corea has played the AX. Herbie Hancock has played the AX. It's a obscure instrument, but it's certainly got a history. And I guess it has a cool jazz scat tone that they have shared with us here. Who knew? All right, I'm gonna wake up my computer. The tone, the parts I wanna put in here are these vocal parts. I wanna do a bass clef tone and then I wanna put a treble clef tone. And I found that when I was improvising them to, in order to synchronize them, I had to get them exactly right. And I was not able to do that playing them separately. So I had to write them out. So to write them out, I used my notation software, which is, for me, it's Sibelius. So let me turn this on and start recording. Uh, Sibelius is a notation software. It's like Finale. There's free versions like MuseScore. Uh, it's great if you want to write things out and then print them as sheet music for other people or for yourself to read. I wrote out a bass clef part, a treble clef part, and then a clarinet solo, and I can play some of that for you. Uh, I have this coming through the line or the headphone jack into the line in of the keyboard. If I go over to audio in line and turn it on, we should be able to hear it. Make sure it's turned up. All right, so this is the bass clef part. Oh, I have it muted. So it doesn't sound super exciting like that, but I'm going to play it uh, and let's just do that. So pattern. Record. I'm going to re uh, play it here. I said I want to play the song at 80, but I can't play the piano that quickly, so I'm going to set the metronome to 70. Oh, there's one other thing I want to show you here. Uh, see if I can zoom in. Uh, Sibelius has this cool play feature where you can set the performance style, and this is exactly what I was talking about before, that 2 eighths equals first and third of a triplet. So I've been able to set that uh, performance style in the program so when it plays it, it sounds correct. Now that's not going to help me now because I'm going to play it myself, but you'll see later that comes in handy. All right, actually I'm going to stop and make sure I know what I'm doing here. I'm going to go... All right, 
It's hard looking this way and trying to play. Uh, again, I'm going to mute it because I don't want to hear any of those parts. All right, all I want... Oh, and the other thing Sibelius does that's really cool is it lets you just look at one part at a time. So this is just the voice part. So let's do that, and then it all stays on the screen. The only reason I'm going to play it on the screen is so that you can see the notes as I go along, and it's easier for me to see also, and it saves me some trees from printing it up because I've changed it a million times. All right, let's see if we can do it. It's kind of fun. All right, that was voice two. That one was easy. Let's try voice one. This one's a little trickier. Uh, same thing. Record, no click, eight measures, weight note, tempo 70. All right. Two, three, four. thing I'm going to do is you might have seen I have a tag down here a tag is when you repeat the last line of a song and drag it out to make that your ending so I'm going to use this tag I have a vocal one and a vocal two tag that I'm going to record now if I just hit record now I'm going to hear this pattern five which was not the tag so I'm going to long press that to disable it turn off the click this is only four measures wait note and let's see if we can get this one in here get the vocal two tag in here. See what I mean about getting those synchronized? I wouldn't be able to just improvise that. You got to write that out. Okay, next step is going to be clarinet here. And the clarinet part is here. And I will play a little of it for you. Unmute it. Hear the swing. All right, I'm not able to play that on the piano because the velocities are different and this is so much more even. And that's how the actual instrument would sound. I can't achieve that here. So I'm gonna enter it from the computer using a generic MIDI connection. I have the cord and I'm ready to hook it up. I'm gonna do that in the next video. So I'll pause here, let y'all take a break, hit that subscribe button, and we'll come back in a few minutes and we'll load this through the MIDI and then we'll do the playout. So I'll see you in a few minutes.